everyone. Uh, we're well past the halfway mark now, and uh, things are beginning to form up as they should. There's a few things, though, that I think we, we need to clarify. Certainly one thing that we need to clarify, and I think a few things that we need to just observe as we go forward. Number one, I think there was some talk that the Senate had some plan to end the PFD or to sacrifice the PFD in some way so as to avoid attacks. That is simply not true. It was never true. It's never been discussed. And um, that kind of rhetoric has no place at this time in our state's, uh, state's history. Number two, we're sitting in a situation where our revenues will, will increase uh, by several hundred million dollars. And so every day that goes by, the Senate's plan is looking better. That isn't to say that we don't respect what the other body will produce. Uh, we'll give it a look. They're moving rather smoothly now on the operating budget. We appreciate that and uh, uh, we'll support them in every way to get that budget over here so that we can uh, have an orderly conclusion of the, of the session. And I think um, number three is we, we continue in our desire and our actions to put downward pressure on the budget. We were, it was very easy to criticize the Senate in the past that all our plan was was cut, cut, cut. And I, you guys have been in this building long enough to know that our plan is far more sophisticated than that. And we still uh, assert and have come to the conclusion that we can fix the state's fiscal problems without any kind of an income tax. And with that, I would just open up to questions. We have leadership here, and uh, there are people from finance and rules uh, that can answer questions on fiscal situations and scheduling, and so fire away. Becky. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. My question is for the co-chairs. Um, there are Alaskans who have taken the position that the governor and legislature should pay the full dividend as currently set out in state law. They don't see any issue with doing that and wonder why that's not happening. Um, neither version of SB 26 contemplates that, and as far as I know, that's not being seriously considered at this point. So I'm wondering if you can be explicit with Alaskans as to why that doesn't seem to be on the table. Before you jump in, I want to make sure, Becky, that you are uh, you answer this question in your article in the context of the fact that uh, the current formulation that we have, let's never forget, it got us down to $100,000 in the ERA. It is not a, um, a, a, a sufficient protection of the uh, earnings reserve uh, in serious market correction, corrections. So, sorry, Madam Co-Chair, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I think that um, the answer seems quite simple to me it, from the standpoint that um, everyone that has looked at uh, the state's uh, $2.5 billion deficit comes to the conclusion that uh, the, the, the earnings from the permanent fund have to be part of the equation. And when you look at what the House has passed and what the Senate has passed twice, it, it, uh, the version that is in con is it, uh, the conference committee that uh, my co-chairman chairs has a split the the difference that's being discussed uh, at this time is the difference between the house the governor and the senate we have a, a 75 25 percent split the governor is proposing a 70 30 split and the house is uh, proposing uh, one third two thirds there has been some discussion about a 50 50 split but uh, if we are um, going to revert back to a full dividend, the question comes into play that that would be a, a much larger deficit. And how would you, how would the the state um, address that? And uh, there are no easy answers to that. But at this point, all the discussions that I've heard uh, have. Uh, have a split from the earnings uh, to uh, address the dividend and address the, the state's fiscal deficit. 
Madam Co-Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Becky, the dividend has been the number one priority for the Senate, though it may not be always characterized uh, like that. But the earnings reserve account and how the current formula works is actually in jeopardy right now. And so the Senate President said, if earnings um, are low, or if we actually have to uh, realize some of our losses in a particular downturn year, then there's nothing left in the earnings reserve account. So right now we have $15 billion in there, and about $3 billion of that is, uh, uh, it's not realized. So $3 billion of the uh, money sitting in the earnings reserve account right now uh, is just uh, paper. It's paper gain. And so it could be paper losses at the same. And so as we go forward, looking at use of the earnings reserve account, whether it's through a percent of market value structure or an ad hoc draw on the earnings reserve, it will leave less money in the account to pay a dividend in the future. And that's what we've been trying to protect. If we have rules in place that can forward look at how we pay dividends, then we do not risk the future of Alaskans' dividend. So right now, there is a temporary hold on the price or the value of an Alaskans' individual dividend. We are trying to stabilize and move forward beyond um, what we're doing today in ensuring that people have a dividend in perpetuity. James? James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Um, where are the status of, I guess, discussions, negotiations between the Senate majority and House majority on revenue? Um, not necessarily a tax, but just on the permanent fund draw right now. Well, the permanent fund draw, we've had uh, maybe um, Senator McKinnon wants to address this, but we've had meetings with the, the four co-chairs, and there has been discussion to try to bring back uh, focus to Senate Bill 26 and and how do we proceed going forward you know I think that um, if anything we we as the the legislature need to look at that very seriously and um, and see what can be done um, we ended up last year um, trying to come to some agreement with the other body but we were unable to do so you know it's my opinion and I stated it last year that we need to address uh, at least one two or possibly three items that are um, key provisions of uh, Senate Bill 26 the fourth one has been the stumbling block and uh, and I don't see how uh, we can uh, come to terms if we're going to have to, as a Senate, accept all of the provisions. Um, otherwise, we end up the same place we were last year, when, when, where we ended up with uh, no provisions uh, of uh, any of the major provisions of Senate Bill 26. And I'm fearful that uh, we may end up there again. But uh, everyone understands that if, uh, if we set the dividend, that's what people want some assurances on. What is, what is the amount of the dividend? The other is, what is the the, the um, take from the earnings? Is it going to be the four point seven five or the governor's five percent or the Senate's five and a quarter? And the big one is, you know, everyone starting off with the original question: well, what is going to go toward state government? Um, Senate Bill 26 answers a lot of questions, uh, and I believe that we need to um, at least get one or two of those provisions addressed this year. So, uh, James, I think one thing that needs to be stated, too, is that the original discussion about revenues or a change in the dividend, all of this, and um, kind of a hyper-concentration on, on uh, of, our, of our spending, came in an environment of $26 per barrel oil. And I have tried to say this many times, I don't know if it's ever been picked up, but I am sympathetic to the people that were looking for whatever ideas they could uh, to fill that gap. $26 per barrel oil is pretty scary. It's just no longer the case now. And as every day that we 
that passes uh, that we don't have an income tax that, uh, shows the wisdom of kind of holding fire on that because now oil is in the 60s, uh, we, our prices are stronger because uh, we're, we're, we're tracking with, with Brent now, um, and our revenues are up because of production as well. So though I don't criticize the House for their uh, kind of dogged uh, pursuit of revenues because of I know where it came from, um, that time has passed, and we have to look at the reality of, of now, which is we we probably could have always gotten away without having extra revenues. Now, certainly. I just don't think there's any way you can make the case that we need more taxes to fill this gap. If I could follow up just briefly on something you said, Senator Hoffman. You yes. said, you, said um, you might get one or two of the kind of the sticking points addressed in Senate Bill 26 this year. Um, as you said, there are four of those. Are you envisioning a scenario where there's kind of a partial Senate Bill 26 or, or a one-year Senate Bill 26? Well, well, that, you know, that remains to be seen. Uh, you know, that dialogue has to take place between the House and the Senate. At uh, this point, mm -hmm. uh, we have talked uh, with the four co-chairs, and basically we've come to the agreement that we're going to sit down and talk. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I wouldn't want to put... Um, you know, uh, what is possible and what is not possible. But uh, we, need, we need to get back to the table and uh, look at the, how important those provisions are in Senate Bill 26. You know, we have a, we have a deficit. Um, and, and, you know, I'm a little bit disturbed that people talk about the deficit being uh, 500 million. Um, or 250 million. The deficit um, without uh, a structured draw is 2.5 billion dollars until that structured draw which sits in that account is resolved by statute. The, uh, we are looking at an unstructured draw and the deficit being uh, about 2.5 five billion dollars and uh, I believe that we need to get that issue addressed. Andrew? Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. For, for Senator Michiki, SB 76, the alcohol law reform bill is uh, up in committee this week. Um, it's uh, I think 